So David, thanks so much for coming on the program and taking time out of your busy schedule. We appreciate it. Thanks for the invitation. So David, let's get into uh, the thick of things. What made you want to get into this line of work? It seems like a hard line of work. I mean, it is, it seems like it's, you know, a, a good line of work that you're helping people, but it couldn't it be pretty depressing at times? <laughs> well, I, I got into it uh, primarily because of, uh, I really believe in uh, social justice. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the folks that, you know, we're serving uh, are low income. They haven't had the opportunities that uh, perhaps you and I have had or many of the listeners. And uh, I've always been uh, kind of a champion for the underdog. So, you know, that's why I got into it. You know, in terms of it getting depressing at times, it does get heavy, uh, no doubt. But uh, what I focus on is, you know, it's that old adage of, is the glass half full or is it half empty? And I really want to believe it's half full. Uh, we have uh, an abundance of resources in this country, in this community. And um, what, what makes it promising or, or more upbeat is to know that each and every day by putting food on someone's table, you're having a really, really basic impact, you know, on Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you know, it's food, shelter, and water are right at the base. Um, so it, it gets as tangible as that. And then as you get into other things that we're doing, like job training and job placement for, for people, you're literally changing lives. So that's what really in inspires me to, to keep on doing this work. And, and a lot of these folks don't have a voice, right, out in society. Right. And, uh, you know, I'm planning next week, I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. Fun place, right? <laughs> what, what's going on? But I'll be meeting with legislators to enlighten and educate them on uh, the needs around food security and proper nutrition, and not only you know how it impacts the individual, but how it impacts all of us, the entire community. So yeah. I get a chance to bring their voices to Washington as well. David Krepko, the president of Second Harvest Food Bank with us today. Uh, David, I wanna talk about these issues. Um, first of all, you kind of brought this up. We do live in the greatest country of world, in the world. We have food for so many people. I mean, the hot land here in this country, it cre uh, it's with the bread that it creates and also the other grains, we could we feed a lot of the world. But we still see a lot of people all over this country that don't have the adequate food, as you stated earlier, to eat. Uh, why do you feel that is? Yeah, there's, there's more than enough food out there to feed everybody. You know, you, you just start with... Uh, all the food waste that is out right. there and annually in this country it's in the tens of billions that's what the b uh that's wasted for a variety of reasons it, it's a matter of getting the food to the people you know and there are uh feeding america food banks across the united states uh us being included one of them that do a, a really good job of doing that however it's we can't get our hands on enough of that food. Um, mm -hmm. it, it costs money to uh, go out and acquire that food, uh, even if it is donated, you know, there's transportation and labor costs associated with it. And then to, uh, then to distribute, you know, is, is a whole nother thing. Um, there's a segment of the population, even when the food is available, that there's a, stigma issue or a pride issue and saying, you know, admitting that they actually need the food. So it gets, you think it'd be really simple, wouldn't you? But it gets, it gets very complicated very fast. Uh, some folks don't know where, um, you know, emergency food is available, you know, so it's a, right. it's a communication and awareness issue as well. What do you think about this new Trump budget that it feels like it's really hurting a lot of uh, these poor people, uh, disabled people in our country, and seniors. It, it's it's going to have a devastating effect. Um, the you know public policy is one of the biggest levers you can pull to either really improve society or or take it another direction. 
And uh, with with his plan, I mean, just think about children or kids, right? They're in circumstances way beyond their control. Uh, you know, it's not like, hey, you're lazy, go get a job. They got to go to school. They got to learn. And uh, his budget proposes to cut school meals by by almost two billion dollars over the next ten years. Um, I I just can't fathom the the rationale behind that kind of thing. We talk to school administrators and principals and teachers, and um, they're telling us that on Mondays, you know, the kids are coming in and they got headaches or stomach aches, or they're or they're missing school because uh, they they perhaps have hardly eaten at all on the weekend, and some kids have not eaten. So that food is is just absolutely critical. Yeah. Plus, for kids, if they're not eating a decent diet, um, they can have permanent cognitive learning disabilities. And if we want a healthy America and a healthy, you know, workforce, you, you have to you have to provide basic nutrition to people. And uh, if you cannot learn, you know, you you cannot earn. And then you know, if you undermine Medicaid, we already have. Uh, a high degree of people in this country that are uninsured to begin with. So if you start stripping Medicaid, you're going to find more and more. So not only do those people's health and wellness suffer, but like I said before, it impacts all of us. You know, uh, it impacts the entire community. Uh, healthcare costs just go into the stratosphere. Then housing assistance now, in the state of Florida, across this country, we have a lack of affordable housing crisis. And um, when people are putting 50 to 60 percent of their income into paying for, for rent or a mortgage, they, you know, the rest of the budget doesn't add up. You know, they don't have enough money to buy medicine, to put gas in the car, pay the utilities or, or put food on the table. And then you think about, you know, I talked about the kids, uh, go to the other end of the chronological scale and the seniors, and the baby boomers are, are aging out. You know, I think it's across this country, 10,000 people turn 60 years old every day. Right. Now, some of those people are retiring just fine, and that's great, but we're finding longer and longer lines at the food pantries that we serve that have senior citizens in line, uh, widows, you know, trying to live on fixed incomes. Um, it's, you know, that, that's a sad sight to see. Right. And then in between, you know, the children and the seniors, there are so many negative stereotypes that are held of people who are in need. And primarily the folks in between the children and the seniors are working households, working Households. United Way nationwide did a study in several states, and they chose Florida as one of the states. And what they found, they interviewed working households. In the state of Florida, 47% of those working households um, can, cannot afford to meet basic needs of paying utilities, food, you know, rent or mortgage. And the vast majority of those did not have $400 in a checking account for some kind of an emergency. So we got we got something terribly wrong with with, with uh, this economy and with the society uh, when nearly half the households are struggling. And there's there's different reasons for that. You know, we we have a, um, a record low unemployment. Up until a couple of days ago, before the coronavirus impacted the stock market, the stock market, you know, overall is, is doing fine. It'll probably bounce back, you know, in time. Four hundred one ks are doing well, so people come up to me often and go, "Oh, with the economy so well and unemployment low, stock market doing good, How, you know, you must be seeing a lot fewer people." We're seeing yes. more people. Um, well, David, I and, wanna... and again. Yes, go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry to interrupt you. I just you got, me, bring you got me rolling there. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're talking my language. I am a fire-breathing progressive in, in my own mind, so I'm totally with you 100%. How do you think we solve some of these problems in our country, mm -hmm. David? Wow. 
it's a it's a complicated uh, question with a complicated answer. You know, I agree. when I look when I look at the population, the lower income population, you know, I think one of the first things is we we have to educate other people out there that these folks are not deadbeats, you know, that they are deserving. I think that's number one. Uh, and that fighting those stereotypes that are held out there, you know, is there abuse in the system? Uh, of, of course there is to a very small degree, but is there abuse on wall street? I yes. think so, you know, you. maybe on a bigger scale, but, um, you know, breaking away stereotypes is one thing. And and the other thing is, um, and it's something that we're going to be focusing our future work on here at the food bank is, you know, uh, when you look at hunger, it's, it's just a symptom. We, we have to go upstream and look at the root causes. So these folks that are, uh, are food insecure, they just don't have a food insecurity uh, problem. They have multiple issues and there's many root causes, but we're, we're looking at four or five of them. One is health. One is education, you know, good paying jobs, housing and transportation. You, you have to work with all of those because just about every one of those individuals is challenged in each of those areas. So if you're, uh, from a health point of view, we we have an obesity epidemic in this country. Right. Did you know that a third of the population is obese in the United States? Right. And a lot of those people are food insecure. It doesn't sound, doesn't compute, right? Mm -hmm. Until you break it down. But because they don't have the money to buy real healthy foods like a pint of blueberries for five or four or five bucks, a great antioxidant, you know, or, or other healthy foods, they're, they're going to buy the, the, the box of mac and cheese to spread it, you know, and mix it with other things. And so that it's high starch, high calories, you know, and, you, and they, uh, they live in food deserts where yeah. <clears throat> there's, little access or no access to stores with good food. And conversely, they're, they live in food swamps, I call them. And these swamps have a plethora of fast food restaurants. So, you know, you go to McDonald's on, you know, two burgers for a dollar Tuesday or something, you know, you buy this yeah. cheap food that is not healthy. So, so that's just one issue. I could go on and on ab about the health issues and, and what it costs this country when people are suffering from obesity and the related dise diseases of hypertension and diabetes. Uh, we work directly with the healthcare industry. And we, we know the exorbitant costs there. And then we talked about housing, affordable housing. There's got to be a solution to this or we're never going to get our way out of this. So uh, you, you got to have pe people working on that front. And the jobs and the income side of it, there's an incredible amount of talent that is just underutilized in this country. Um, we see it firsthand where we provide culinary training and distribution center training and job placement. We bring in low-income people that have not had the opportunity to have a good solid education, that want a second or third chance, we bring them in, we teach them at no cost to them with professional chefs and logistics people, uh, culinary or distribution center training with life skill training, which is absolutely critical. How do you, you know, basic how, household uh, budgeting, how do you write your first resume, how do you have a job interview? And we're placing these people into jobs when they graduate. They're, they come in, you know, they're, they're not comfortable in a college uh, or university setting, nor can they afford it. So my point is we have to do a lot in this country around adequate job training. The people are out there. The skills are out there. Uh, they want to get into these programs. We, we have a line of people wanting to get into our programs. And we have a lineup of employers who, who want our graduates because they come out with it with a good attitude. And then on education, 
you know, we could talk for hours about education, either at the elementary, middle or high school or, or college level on that. Um, there's not everybody is set for college, you know, uh, so there's, there's got to be trade schools in that. So uh, within our educational system, that, that's really got to be overhauled. And the last thing we got to do, you know, is, is be cutting back on school breakfast and lunch programs. Um, and I'm sure I forgot one of those buckets, but, you know, it's a very, very long answer to your question. So there's a number of areas, that's my point, that have to be looked at. And what it's going to take is really strong leadership uh, and leadership you know, starting at the highest level in Washington, D.C., um, that's willing to put, you know, uh, put a budget towards what really counts in this country, and, and, that's, and that's people and, and, and lifting up people uh, that, that need maybe that second chance. The, um, we need leadership at the state level in, in government and right down to the uh, county and city level. So it's really going to take, take strong leadership and for people uh, to speak, to speak out. And, you know, if there's one, one thing I want to get across to the listeners is to vote, <laughs> get yes. out and vote that, you know, we have that right. Um, you know, those votes are counted and um, we, we can stand up and do that. And we, we, we can create change. David Krepko, Second Harvest Food Bank here in Central Florida. The funding you get, do you get any state funding or do you, is it just donations? How does that work? Yeah, we receive funding from a variety of sources. I'd like to say a mixed portfolio. So if, if one, one part of that portfolio is suffering, the others will shore it up. So, you know, from a, uh, our annual operating cost, about 20% of our annual budget is government funded. So, you know, little, a, a small percentage. And those are contracts that we have the, with the state. And uh, the, the, that money is passed to the state through federal programs. So about 20% there, but about 60% of our income is coming from individuals, you know, um, it could be Mrs. Jones who sends in a $5 check every year to, uh, you know, somebody who owns a successful business and can write us a, you know, a, a, a five-figure check and every, everybody in between. So that 60% is, uh, has taken a lot of time to build up what we call that donor base. They, they know the efficiencies. Then we get about 50, yeah, roughly 10% of our money from, uh, corporate charitable foundations or private charitable foundations. Mm -hmm. And we uh, also do a couple fundraising events. So, it, you know, you could see where it's, it's a, it's a mixed bag and, and there's a, there's a place for all that, you know, people like to donate to us for uh, a couple of key financial reasons. We're audited every year. And our auditors give us a, a, a number of numbers to, to work with, but they give us an efficiency ratio. And <clears throat> that determines how much is really going to feeding people and how much of that is, is, is going to administration and fundraising. So we have a 97% efficiency ratio. That means 97 cents of every dollar is going to feeding people. Um, we're proud of that. We're working on going towards 99% <laughs> if possible. Uh, the, the other number that they give us, they're able to equate for every dollar donated to Second Harvest, we distribute $9 worth of groceries. So that's a phenomenal return on investment. You know, a lot of people will hesitate to donate to a charity because you know, they, they might ask the question, well, what are they really going to spend this on? You know, is yes. somebody getting rich off of this or whatever? Uh, and, and people should be asking those questions and, and doing research. So, um, you know, we, uh, we, we really thank uh, the, the general public and, and the corporate foundations, you know, and, and for some very extremely wealthy people, the one percenters, wealth, 
wealth is healthy when it is used properly. Um, and we have these wealth, you know, a select wealthy handful of donors that really believe in giving back and, and lifting people up. Okay. I want to talk with a couple more questions left uh, about each spoke about the fundraising events. Can you go in depth about that? Yeah, we have a, a couple of fundraising events and we also call them friend raising. Okay. Mm-hmm. So there's one in April coming up, and especially if, for the ladies that are listening. And if you're in central Florida, we call it wine, women and shoes. <laughs> Do I have to say any more than that? <laughs> So it's uh, an event, four or 500 women come to it at the JW Marriott, beautiful five-star hotel, mm-hmm. and have a wonderful Saturday afternoon. There's all kinds of fashionable shoes on display, jewelry, all, all kinds of things like that. And the wineries come in to, um, you know, to have you sample their, their selections. And what we do is have a, a silent auction and a live auction during that event. So um, people can come together and have a lot of fun and, and have a party with a purpose, you know. And then in September, we have our uh, Taste of Orlando, and that's at the Orlando Marriott World Center. And uh, there again, we have uh, a silent auction. Uh, and about uh, 20 really fine restaurants come in and with their chefs, and you can just graze around that room all evening with uh, wine and Tito's and all kinds of incredible food, um, from French to Italian to pulled pork, uh, steak, you name it. But again, the proceeds you know, go to feeding kids. So th- those are a couple of events that we have. Um, I want to talk about volunteers. If people want to get involved, how can they get involved? I know we spoke about donating, and obviously that's, you know, a good purpose. But volunteering, you know, you see the problems firsthand. Maybe it will make an imp- impression on you about, you know, food waste and uh, hunger in general. Sure. You know, there's, yeah, there's, there's different ways to help as you, to donate. And, you know, one is... One, one is financial and the other one is donating your time. And at times that can be even more precious than, than finances for people. So we cannot accomplish our work without volunteers. So, you know, for, the, for Second Harvest Food Bank, and if you're in the area, you can go to our website and that's feedhopenow.org. And when you go to our website, you will see a tab on volunteers and you, you go into that. You can actually sign up online uh, for volunteering here. Uh, we record all of our volunteer hours uh, annually and, and the number of volunteers. And last year alone, we had 127,000 volunteer hours. Uh, just fantastic. We have uh, faith-based groups come in. Lots of corporate groups like to come in and do team building. Um, we have uh, lots of schools from elementary to middle to universities during spring break come in. Senior citizens, families come in. People, I find, really want to make a difference in, in the world. They just need a way to to get connected. And we find like, like you mentioned, that people who come in to volunteer, many of them get involved in food drives or financial donations or, or become advocates. They, they learn more about our mission and what we do, and uh, they spread the word. So they become ambassadors, so to speak. Right. I agree. You know, if you see the problem firsthand, you know what the problem is, and you can hopefully find a way to somewhat fix it. Uh, David Krepko here from Second Harvest Food Bank. I thank you for your time. I just want to know quickly before we go, do you have a lot of restaurant donations? Do you guys do that also? Oh, yeah, we do. Um, we're, we're picking up from uh, all the Darden restaurants. So that's the um, right. Long, uh, Longhorn Steakhouse. That is uh, Olive Garden. It's Capitol Grill. It's Eddie V's. 
we're picking up from about a dozen Disney properties. I mean, if you can imagine Epcot, right? Uh, The convention hotels we're picking up, they'll they'll have a meal for a thousand people. So what we do is we pick up the unserved prepared food. Um, And our, our drivers are trained in safe food handling. We have refrigerated trucks. And we can we can deliver that directly to uh, programs that that are prepared to to serve that you know within 24 hours. Last year alone, that kind of food we picked up about 1.5 million pounds of that just in the Orlando area. It, it's amazing the, the the waste that is out there. That's great, and thank you, David Krepko. Thanks so much for that information. And lastly, where can people find more about uh, Second Harvest Food Bank? Again, if you could read the website or any kind of way people yeah. can contact you guys. Yeah. So it's feedhopenow.org, or you can simply Google Second Harvest Food Bank Central Florida, and it'll take you right there. And we have ways that you can uh, donate money, volunteer your time, do a food drive, all kinds of ways. And and if you don't get the information that you need off the website, you know our phone number is there, and and you can you can give us a call. We would welcome Thanks, you. Sir. I really appreciate uh, having a chance to speak with you and your audience. Thanks so much, David. And again, you gave out some great information on the problems of our society and the problems that we have in. Uh, the lack of accessibility for good, you know, quality food, not just like junky food that you can buy in Dollar Tree, nothing against them. But, but uh, people need good sources of nutrition and it's not always out there for people that aren't wake- making those fair wages. So I really ag- uh, appreciate you bringing that to attention here today. And I'm serious. I know you, you laughed at it. I hope that uh, you'll get involved in some sort of political office because like I said, <laughs> like I said, you know the problems and we need somebody that knows the problems and you definitely have the solution. So I appreciate the time and we hope to talk to you another time here on the program, David. Thanks again. Be my pleasure. Bye-bye. All right, bye now.